Dear students, I am with the lesson Deep Water today. Deep Water is the third lesson of Flamingo. Deep Water is written by William O. Douglas, an American writer. This is an autobiographical sketch. It has been taken from his book of Men and Mountain. In this lesson, William O. Douglas describes how he was panicked after getting drawn in a pool. What happened with him? How he was panicked? In the first part, in the first video, I would like to describe how he became paralyzed after drowning. And in the second one, in the second part of the lesson, I will describe how he won over it. You can understand it may be described in two parts because how to win over the fear is the main motto of the writer to describe and this is the part that the students have to understand for his own benefit for the life. Everyone should understand how fear should be won. So in this lesson, Deep Water, he says that how he became drunk. When he was 10 or 11 years old, he wanted to learn swimming. Although he had a very bad experience, when he was 3 to 4 years old, his father took him to California Beach, where water swept over him. He was panicked, he cried, but father laughed. Now that he is learning swimming, that fear revived again. But he managed to do it. Two options were there. One was Yakima River and another was YMCA pool. Yakima River was treacherous one. Treacherous means dangerous one. There was no fixed level of deep. That is why people would warn them not to go there, not to swim in it. But once here, who was safe? It was two to three feet in shallow end and nine feet deep in another end. And drop is also gradual. He went there. He subdued the pride of opening the clothes. He didn't like to be naked going to him, but he subdued it, means suppressed it, and entered in the water. He felt normal and watching others, copying others, he started swimming. Two to three times he would go every day. When an incident took place. One day he went there earlier, no one else was there. He waited there till others come because he had fear to go in the water alone. A young brother of the boy, means ever bodied boy of about 18, came and said, Oh, young Eskimi, would you like to be that? Means, would you like to swim? And making fun, took him and threw him in the deep end. Perhaps he knew that he learned swimming, but he didn't know anything. As he was thrown, he went down and down. Going deep. He thought that he had learned lots of things about swimming. He will go very soon under the water. But he went gradually, slowly. When he touched, he has learned the strategy of swimming. When he would touch the ground, he has to leap upward. He will come up like a cock and then 
play with the hands and leg and come in the side of the river or pool. But it didn't happen. He went down slowly. After going down, touching the level of ground, as he had learned, he leaped upward. He came up slowly and slowly. And nine feet deep seemed to be ninety feet for him. He came up. He played, tried to catch something, rope, or something. You understand? A drowning man catches at a straw, but he found nothing. Again he went down. He was unable to breathe. His lung ached. He could not see anybody. He tried to cry, but sound didn't come. He felt that he will die. His mind throbbed, lungs ached, and his limbs were just like dead weight. Gradually, he went down and down and felt that the level was trying to catch him as if the water he was in the force of water his own force didn't work but he learned that he was alive not dead he summoned his strength he collected his strength and leaped upward and came up gradually, slowly and slowly and slowly. Came up and tried to cry. His nose came out, mouth also, but was not able to breathe. As he wanted to breathe, he drank water. And then trying to cry, but sound doesn't come. Nobody is to listen here. He tried to frame, use hands and legs, but this didn't work. He felt that these have dead weights, have no force. He was panicked. He was panicked that he was in the point that he is to die. And then he is in fit condition. He felt drowsy and he liked it. He felt that he is being carried in the lap of mother. And then next he found himself in the side of the locker room. And Somebody was telling, the boy was nearly dead. He was dead. He was to die. The young boy who had thrown him into the deep end said, just I was making fun of him. Fun of him. In the one hand, the boy is dying, but he was making fun. Perhaps he could not understand. Then, anyhow he was able to stand there. After standing, his parts of the body didn't work. There was pain in every part of the body. A stomach ache was there. And in trembling condition, he anyhow reached home. That night he could not eat even and showing me he passed of time. Since then he became terror striking. He was panicked. Whenever 
he went anywhere, he saw water, that fear revived. And that fear made him paralyzed. He was unable to make any movement. Seeing water, he felt that he is drowning again. This deprived him of the joy of canoeing. Canoeing is sort of boating. When a long boat is known as canoe and one enjoy it, that is known as canoeing. Boating, swimming, all these funds are out of his reach because he could not think of it. Seeing water, he is panicked. He is afraid to go into the water. Even fishing was a great fun for him and he is not able to go for fishing because that old fear of drowning revived, seeing it. And this made him paralyzed of no one. So this is the one part that I have discussed in short. It is necessary to go to the main text. I tell you the main idea. In the second part, I am to discuss how he won over the fear of water. Thank you very much.